Hi, it's Rob from Skid Steer Genius, and today I'm going to show you how to repair a, a Bobcat 7-pin connector on one of our 7-pin controllers. And I'm using one of our new tools, uh, so we've actually uh, um, started adding tools to our website. And the difference in our tools and just buying something off of Amazon is we've gone through years of testing. If you notice, we've been doing this for almost 30 years and never had tools because I could never find the right ones at the right price. And so what we did is we've tested hundreds of tools over the years. Most of them failed or, or the other, on the other side of it, they were just way too expensive. So now we have a, a value price tool that does the job really well and uh, works really well on these connectors so we can put them back together in a cost effective manner. So with that said, uh, let's get down to it and I'll show you exactly how to make the repair. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is uh, I trimmed the ends off nice and clean and I've stripped the insulation back about an inch and a half here. Okay, and then there's little pieces of paper. Sometimes you'll see string. What you want to do is get those out of the way. So I just kind of pull them back. Like so, so I just got my four wires left. Now on uh, Skid Steer Genius controllers, we only use the four wires. We use power ground, can high and can low. But you'll notice if you're repairing an actual Bobcat connector off a Bobcat attachment or the machine, uh, they use all seven wires. So if you buy one of our kits, we give you all the, all the pins that you would require to do the entire harness, even though if you're just repairing one of ours, so that's kind of the most common thing is people, um, people tear them off. They get them caught in their wheels or whatever. So they tear the connector off. So if you notice, I'm just using my, side cutters here, just trimming these back and out of the way. So now I've just got my four wires exposed here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my strippers here and I'm just going to strip the end of each wire back about a quarter inch. Like so. Okay, we're going to ring strip back here. Okay, and then um, don't forget, you, you always want to use some shrink tubing on here. It has a couple different purposes. Is it helps to seal everything up. It also helps to provide an extra strain relief because it's going to actually go over the back of this connector here and it'll hold this on a little better. So just to make it a little bit tougher so um, when it's out in the field, it doesn't get damaged so easy. So now I've got my wires strip back. I'm just going to do my power pins first, which that's my black and my white. So I'll just push these out of the way. And my power, in this case, I'm doing pins because I'm doing the attachment side. So I'm just going to pull these back out of the way here. So I'm going to do my power pins. And all I'm going to do is line it up so the wire is in the larger part here. You can see this crimp area that's large and then there's this little extra area that's meant to crimp into the shielding just to give you again a little bit of strain relief so it's not getting pulled on the wire all the time because this is kind of the heavier pin so in that case I'm going to use uh, my 2018 so on the side of the tool it's actually got gauges marked here <clears throat> and so you'll see it marked 2018 so that's the one that we're going to use first so, and that's facing me because I've got the, the little crimp curling part over the top and that's the part that I want to, I want to actually crimp this thing down on. So I just grab my black wire first here. I slide it in. So a little bit of the, the rubber shielding is in that larger crimp. I have it nicely centered. I grab the 2018, I slide it into place. Okay. And you can feel it. If it tries to twist, don't crimp any further. Stop and just hold it and make sure that it's the crimp is coming down nice and solid on there. Okay. Okay, now that's full. So once I've got it kind of lined up and I can feel that it's in there, then I give it a nice good squeeze. And I'll move it around a little bit so I get the entire crimp. And it folds it over just beautifully. And that's just using the 2018. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it again on the bigger ones. 
Sometimes these little ears are folded out. So you just want to give it a little pinch and make sure that it's lined up there because you want it to center into the center of the crimping tool. And I look at my, my pin here too, make sure everything's centered. And I just give it a, just a light squeeze to start so that it pulls it into the wire. I don't want to, I don't want to squeeze down as hard on this one. And you'll see it's got, it's nice, it's nicely in there. It's holding, got a nice crimp. And now we'll go on to the next one. So same thing. I can do this a little bit faster now. You can just keep rewinding this if you want to see how it's done. But again, the 2018, you can see the numbering on here. Center it. And I just want to hold with my other hand. I just hold it. Just give it a good squeeze. Move up to the to the shielding, pinch it together a little bit just to make sure it's centered. Give it a little squeeze, just so it bites down into that shielding nicely. Okay, now it's in there nice and tight. <clears throat> now we'll do the signal ones. These are a little bit different. They've just got like a little barrel. So they don't actually go around the shielding because they're the shielding is too thick for this gauge of pin. That's kind of the weird thing about this is They've got power pins, which take more current, and then signal pins, which are smaller. So everything's a little bit tight here. Um, you know, it's tight on the on the power, but it's kind of loose on the signal. So we've got to make sure we've got a good crimp going on in there. So now we're going to use the, um, on the signal, we use the 2018 on here, because it's the same size wire. So you just want to center it. Again, you'll feel it kind of fall into position, and then you'll just give it a nice, solid crimp. You'll see it in there. Came out beautifully. So what I like to do is get my pin positioning done first. So again, I verified I put my shrink tubing on here. Let's move my tools out of the way. And so I've got, these are my power pins. So I've got uh, black is one and uh, three is white. So black is actually, in this case, it's your plus 12 volts. Uh, white is, uh, is your ground. This is following house wiring standards. This goes a long history. We've been making these for 14 years and I had an engineer that kind of went rogue on me and decided to do follow house wiring standards instead of automotive. So we've got thousands and thousands of these out there. So we never wanted to change it in all the new designs. So just kind of is what it is. So in this clay case, black is plus 12 and white um, is your ground. And then when it comes to the signals, these are your two cam lines, which is your green and your red. And so um, your green goes to A and your red goes to B. So I'm just going to place them here. And if you look at the back of the connector, and sometimes it's easier just to take the back off when you're working on it, make sure you slide it over though. Slide it over so that you can screw it back on when you're done. Uh, you'll notice on the back here, it's actually labeled all of the letters and the numbers. So it's really easy for you to push it in. There's a little keyway here in the rubber, the rubber seals to make sure that you've got it in the right place. And so it's quite simple. I just push my black into one. I push my white two, three, and I'll just kind of get them just partially seated. And then I'll come right back around and I'll do my, my signal pins, which has my green, I'm going to turn this a little bit, green goes to A. And then my red goes to, red goes to B, which is down here. Okay, and I'm just going to slide them a little at a time. Don't need to rush it and you'll feel as they as they hit bottom they'll start to click and also like i used to i didn't want to use it in the video but if you're working out in the, <clears throat> out in your shop or whatever a little liquid silicone just some that spray stuff you can use that and just kind of just to make everything slide in a little bit better or from the back you can use your tool, just grab the wire and 
do a little bit more of a push just to push it into place. And you'll see each one click as it comes up into place here. As with everything when you're working on these things, just, just be patient. It's, uh, everything doesn't always go together perfectly. And sometimes you have to pull a thing out and restart, but This black wire rolled over on me and it's being a bugger. There we go. Okay, I, I could feel it click in place. There's what it looks like installed. Got my locking ring here. You always want to make sure you put that on correctly as well. There's little, uh, little guides here so that when you slide it on, you can turn it and it locks in place. Okay, now that's locked in here, I put my back cap on. I slide my shrink tubing on and I just want to have it so I've got a little bit exposed here but I won't what I want is a little bit of a lip here so it actually rolls over top of that black uh, locking ring so you see I've got that and I always use a little bit I'm kind of conservative with this stuff I, I like to use a fair amount of it or liberal sorry I like to use a fair amount of it just so that I've got the maximum strain relief that I can get. <clears throat> and then all I do here is take the ring. Just kind of roll it so that it catches. You can see it kind of shrinking leaking up there. Now I'm just going to turn it. Just keep turning it so that it shrinks evenly and I'm using three to one with the glue set so you'll see like it looks really big but once we get to the end here you're gonna see just how tight it gets and you'll see the glue squirt out the end here So I can see that it's sealed, I can see the glue, so now I'm gonna go back, just to make sure I've got everything here. I want a nice hard seal on this. And that's it. Now I'm just gonna let it rest, just so it hardens up, and that's it. I have completely repaired my uh, controller so I can go put it back into the field and get it operating again on somebody else's attachment. Yeah.